George has never seen a tripod in his life and he's so confused right now. George. <laughs> I kind of stopped working in makeup and I kind of fell off of the makeup train because of that. And it's been like, honestly, a year since I filmed. No, I don't think that's true. Anyways, it's been a long time since I filmed and I feel like I finally have like found my work-life balance rhythm. I feel like I'm kind of stepping back into the makeup world. I'm still not exactly feeling my most creative yet. I basically like stopped prioritizing being creative and loving makeup so I just kind of fell off and because I wasn't working in makeup anymore like I didn't naturally have I wasn't naturally surrounded by it in saying that I completely stripped back my makeup and like honestly I'm this is kind of going to be a little bit of a lazy girl tutorial because this is what I've been doing in my not loving makeup but getting the shit done phase but also like this is it's really kind of highlighted what I reach for every day and like I've been anyways I feel like I just need to stop talking and just get into it anyway so everything I mention has been like a staple for the past year I've got I'm gonna do kind of more my everyday look for this video but I will mention like my going out favorites as well because I really just didn't put any thought into my makeup and just like used what I love so I'm very excited to show you everything because these are like as I said holy grails first things first S Strivectin anti-wrinkle line blur perfecter I went through my Trini London miracle blur way too quickly like to be honest the Trini London like I get the concept of them being like small and compact and travel sized um, but everything I've used from them, like, I've finished. I've finished the bronzer, i finished the Miracle Blur. This is a dupe. But, I don't know the prices, but you get so much in that bottle compared to the Trini London one. Like, I've been using this for a year straight and I have not made a dent. And to be honest, <gasps> am I going to regret saying this? I think it's better than the Trini London Miracle Blur. Miracle Blur is good, like it's a great product, but it is definitely thicker than what I am craving in my skincare. I mean, primer, but it was definitely more like incident prone because it was a thicker formula. This one is so thin that I never have any peeling. Um, I do let it sit for a little while and I like pat it in kind of. I don't think I've really been patting it in though, but tell myself I do and my Botox is worn off so like need some blurring in my life that's the very first thing okay with base products Rimmel Lasting Perfection is the best foundation ever in the world for going out slash like nights out like long lasting wanting it to look good it is I just wish that I could the moment I put it on the way that my skin looks is just like, uh, it's flawless, it's airbrushed, it's beautiful, and it lasts. Um, but I won't be using that today because it's just a random Wednesday, you know, and like I don't really need that coverage. So instead, to be honest, I haven't really worn this much. Like if I'm doing my lazy girl makeup, it's a bit of concealer. Barely, like maybe a bit of concealer. But recently I've been putting a little bit of this on to even out my skin. This is the Trini London BFF Rebalance, so the one that's technically for oilier skin. It Just because, like, I've been getting a little bit of bumpy texture and, like, this kind of just smooths it all out. I like the way it looks with my hands, uh, when it's applied with my hands, but I don't love applying things with my hands. Like, it's not my favourite. I might just, like, apply it with my finger and then... If I need to blend it out, I will. This color is like a little bit yellow for me, but that's only because I haven't been doing anything with my life. I haven't been going outside. <laughs> I haven't been tanning. I've been so, I need to get back into tanning to be honest. Like I've been so lazy. <sighs> very much been, it's very much been the year of laziness for me. So like this, I want this to be sheer. I don't want to look like I've got foundation on. Like, when applied with fingers, it looks so much like skin 
Like, I think my best friend literally the other day was like, oh, your skin looks so perfect and beautiful. And I was like, I have... <laughs> that's such like a... That's such a funny thing to say. My best friend was like, oh my god. You have beautiful, perfect skin. <laughs> but she did start to bring it up and I was like, no, I have foundation on. Well, I have a tinted moisturizer on. <gasps> you guys. I dermaplane my face for the first time in like... Like five, six months two days ago and like now I'm, I'm like getting all this texture that I didn't want to have obviously <sighs> but it's okay it needed to be done it needed to be done I think my skin was just like whoa 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 we haven't done this in a while I'm also returning okay 2023 I'm just gonna embrace my laziness like another reason why I didn't film any YouTube videos or content like other than the fact that the platform kind of sucks, I've kind of fallen back in love with YouTube a little bit, like watching other people. So I don't want to put like music on. I don't want to spend like three days editing a video of myself. I just want to get it out there. Um, so I'm very much been inspired by Maxine Olivia. I hope that's... I had like a moment where I was watching her videos and I was like, oh my God, what's her name? Because I just, like, know her face. Anyways, she doesn't really, like, edit down her videos. Like, she leaves kind of a lot of the awkward pauses in. So it might be, it might get a bit boring at times here on my lovely channel. But I don't really care. If it means I'm getting content up, then it is what it is. Anyways, Trini London BFF Free Balanced, babes. Next, eyebrows. Eyebrows, I've been so lazy. I don't want to do them. Like, my eyebrows look fine. I have darkened my hair, so I did have to go and change. <sighs> I did have to change a lot of my products. So, like, I'm kind of using things that I'm, like, not exactly happy with, but I can't be bothered. <laughs> can't be bothered dealing with. And, like, for example, so, love my got-to-be brow gel, but now that my hair's a bit darker, I do have to, like, add colour so, um, regardless, I'm a powder girl now, so I've got two powders. This Illamasqua eyeshadow is just for when it's, like, freshly black dyed, which I don't know if I'm going to black, freshly black dyed again. Like, it's kind of faded to, like, a nice dark brown now, and I kind of like it. Anastasia brow powder is just, like, a natural go-to. I do love... Oh! This is probably my favourite brow powder, the Cocoa Powder from Pink Honey. But, like, oh, it's in Ebony. It's a very brown though still. Do they have a dark? I don't think they had a darker. So maybe that's why I didn't repurchase in a darker colour. Um, anyways, so this is my favourite brow gel. The Magic Brows from Model Co Emco Beauty. Sorry. Emco Beauty. They all kind of... Anyways, this is my favourite brow gel ever. It is amazing, adds like a nice thickness, it's not clumpy, it's just perfect, but it's too light for me now. Honestly, what I might do today, oh my god, I'm talking about a million things at once. Anyways, I bought the Coasters Airbrow in like black and it's fine. It's very dry and flaky, I'm not loving it. But anyways, as I was about to say, is I might do black brow powder, brown brow gel today and see how it goes so I'm just gonna skip that because it's really nothing exciting like I'm not I don't care about my brows these days okay brows are done and the sun is behind clouds now I I quickly wanted to say because I think I got really caught up in what I was gonna do with my brows and I forgot to mention this is my favorite brow gel but the reason why I had to stop using it is because they don't make it any darker. But I feel like now that the artificialness of like the black dye has worn off, I feel like I can get away with it, which I'm very excited about. Favorite eye primer? Beauty Bay. I don't really know. There's not really much to say. It's just like a really good eye primer. And I've put it under my eyes too because... Because I'm getting older and all my concealers kind of like betrayed me and they make me look old now so I have to I don't like I don't like chucking out makeup and like I still have heaps that like I need to get through even though I've got my favorites 
So priming the under eyes it is so we're not wasting products that don't agree with me anymore. Time for the eyes. Um, this is the funniest favourite to me because it's so boring. My favourite eyeshadows are these two. Can you see that? They're basically the same colour. But like one's a little bit more taupey and one's a little bit more like champagne. These are the Revlon So Fierce little eyeshadows. They're like little baked eyeshadows. I only use like three out of these two palettes. But I don't know, I don't know, this one, like, what is it, wait, was it this one? This one in Slight Flex, that seriously was the only colour that I used all of 2022. <laughs> like, the other colours are barely, like, that looks brand new. <gasps> no, actually, I love this one. I've used this one heaps, why does it look brand new? This one is a nice one, it's kind of like, um, one of those, like, it's not a brown, like usually it's like a brown green, but this is more like a champagne with like that green shift. That's beautiful. I've used that a lot. That's like when I want to like maybe be a little bit interesting, but not too much. This other palette only, oh, maybe the pink as well. Like these two. I'll swatch them all for you and show you. But anyways, I'm literally just going to put that, that first color, that champagne in the Slight Flex palette all over, all over my eyes. I might like go in at the end and do something like a bit fu fun and funky. So I got a hiccup just then. That will only be for the video because I have not been doing anything that fun and funky in real life. So, oh, what a horrible swatch. Oh my God, why did I do that? That's a horrible swatch. Anyways, that's the Slight Flex palette. The very one at the top that doesn't even look like it's there. That's my favorite one. I'll swatch the other one, which is in Fully Loaded. And again, actually, I might like to use, oh, I don't know. Do I want to use this one today? I'm swatching in the same spot. Like, I didn't just learn that that's a horrible place to swatch. Can you see that one at the top? No? Perfect. I might use that one today. Let me swatch them right next to each other. <laughs> and make up my mind. One's just slightly lighter. So the top one is what I've been wearing all year. Can you focus? Thank you. Um, this one's going to be the one that I'm doing today because it's even closer to my skin tone. So we're going to just literally take your finger. Definitely this formula works best with your finger because it's baked. might like to use the green like at Christmas maybe Christmas is next week when I'm filming this by the way I don't know when I'm gonna get it up <laughs> can you see how beautiful that is I feel like I'm I feel like a crazy person I hope that you can see a difference because <laughs> I just think it's beautiful Hey, I'm gonna like rub it under as well, like this. Lovely. I also included this in my lineup, the Beauty Bay Nude Matte Nine Color Palette, just because like it's got some nice staples in it. Like I use the black a lot. I use these three a lot. I use that a lot. Um, but not using it today because I'm being lazy. Um, I also included these lashes and I've just decided I don't want to wear them. They are beautiful, but they are a little bit difficult. So I got these off of Amazon because I was a bit obsessed with like that, that picture that was going viral um, of the, I want to say it's like the anime style lash. Like it, it, that style of lash really reminds me of Rico Nasty. But these are really difficult to use if I don't have eyeliner on. But I love them. I'll see if I've got a picture. I think I do have a picture somewhere of me wearing them. 
not gonna wear them today. Might put lashes on. Might decide that at the end, but for now, we're leaving it as this masterpiece. On to, oh, here's where it gets exciting, the base products. So like I mentioned with the foundation, I have like an everyday favorite and then a going out favorite. For concealer, my going out favorite is also Rimmel. And I see nobody talking about this. And to be fair, I never talk about them, but they are my favorite. Like I don't think I've ever posted on my Instagram about these. The Rimmel Multitasker, it like, it, it gives everything that like, you know, the classic Tarte Shape Tape would have been, but it's not. It's just like better. It is a full coverage concealer, but it just is so like, it's such a bouncy coverage. Like it looks, it looks fresh, but you have the coverage there. It's blendable. It does set down, but you have like a lot of playtime. That's the best concealer in the world, in my opinion. But because I'm not doing my full glam shenanigans today, uh, Trini London, Alexandra, Alexandria, just a touch foundation. Um, it's been a journey, me and this little pot, but I love it. I, it's definitely not, like this is too small for a foundation. So it's definitely a concealer to me. And my Trini London videos will get a bit popular and everyone was a bit upset with me. The fact that I didn't like the, the BFFs corrector because it doesn't really do much. I still use it, but like it's not enough coverage for anything. Like it's a waste of time, honestly, but this is beautiful. And it's like such a smooth, creamy texture. I like it a lot. Um, I had never used this, but I saw it in my collection today and I was like, oh, I'm going to use my Becca Brightening Corrector as well, just for a bit of fun. Something about filming YouTube videos is that you kind of step out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to quickly pat a little bit of that corrector under my eyeball. But I think because they're like both like creamy pot concealers, it makes sense. I'm just going to do it like right in here. If anyone's curious, yes, I will be getting Botox again. I kind of have learned to love my little wrinkle here because now that I've had Botox, like the indent isn't as bad, but I do miss it. But my jaw Botox, when I'm telling you, the Botox in my masseters was the best thing I ever did. I took for granted how, how great the Botox worked. Like I have been stressing in my sleep for no reason. Like I feel like I just, it's just sleep very stressfully. And the pain is just right back to how it was. I need to get my Botox again or I'm going to cry every day. It's not so bad now, but um, I have like this manicure um, massager, but like it's not the same. It like helps a little, but Botox just like changed my life. Also, because I'm getting older, less concealer, less concealer, guys, and I apply it lower and then blend it up. I think that was a tip from, mm, I think her name's Elizabeth. I really know people from like their, just their faces alone on online. Like I don't really know what her Instagram handle is. But anyways, I think she said that because she's like a bit anti-concealer and I was like, oh, really into it for a bit there. I too can tend to be anti-concealer. Like on a daily basis, if I'm like really, really lazy, like this is lazy, but filming it. <laughs> but if I'm really lazy, like I'll put the Trini London BFF serum tint moisturizer on and then like nothing. No concealer with that. But anyways, I'm just going to do a little bit of correcting, probably just there. <sighs> and on my little discoloration here. I really want to put some on like whatever this forehead situation is going on. But I worry if I just, if I put concealer there, it's going to make it more textured. Yeah, that's all right. Pretend, pretend like you don't see my, I'm having issues with bumps. I feel like I need to um, do that thing. I never did it, but remember when Skin by Hiram, whatever, is he still like a thing? I don't know. He did the Nizoral, he used the dandruff shampoo Nizoral to like 
clear up the bumpiness like this. Maybe I need to try it, should I? I never tried it, but like, I feel like this situation might need a bit of that. Anyways, that's all I'm doing, just like correcting the center of my face. Maybe I'll correct this. This vein has gotten really prominent recently. That's all. Fun. <sighs> Westman Atelier bronzing. What do I call you? Face trace contour stick. Definitely, I don't use it as a contour so much, but like the best thing ever. And look how much I've got left. I think I can like dig into it, but like. This is the best shit I've ever had in my This is just the best shit ever. I just like can't. The tone is beautiful. The texture, I mean the finish. I really don't have a lot left and I don't want to waste it. I'm not doing anything today. So like I really don't want to use a lot. I don't know. I haven't really been buying makeup this year. Like, and I have other bronzers. So, like, I think if I run out of this, I'm not going to repurchase it straight away. And, like, that kind of makes me sad. But this is, like, outstanding. If something in my collection was to win an outstanding award, it would be that. On to cream blush. Still Tower 28. <laughs> what are these called? Beach Please blushes. I still only have two and I only need two. This one is still my favorite. Like I think I put it on a blog post for like last year's favorite and like I've been using it the year before. It's my favorite. And it is in Magic Hour. It's just beautiful. And I have like, ever since I dyed my hair darker, I have been using this one more, the Golden Hour, the orange blush. I realize now that I have darker hair as well, like I've been really into the orange tones and like a cool pink. Cool pink, like it took me a little while to get used to because I used to wear cool pink like every day to school when I was a child. Because I like wore makeup in like grade six. So it felt like unnatural to do it again, but it looks nice. Anyways, this one. This is like my color. Like if I was a blush, I would be this color. That's too much. Oh well. What is wrong? Jesus Christ. Heavy handed. Don't know what got into me just then. I don't usually use that like brush, so maybe I just got a bit carried away. Anyways, it's gonna fade anyways, it's blush. Um, this isn't my favorite in general, but like over the top of this blush, I always use the Clinique Nude Pop because it's like the same. Same thing, but in a powder form. But we're gonna do that after we set. So that means it's time to set. Now, this is so strange to me. Like I don't know where, where my, like my love for this foundation powder. Like it's definitely a foundation powder, than, but I use it as a setting powder. I don't know where it came from. Like I don't remember buying this. I don't remember being like, oh, I'm gonna use that. CoverGirl Clean Fresh Press Powder. I do love the foundation. I still have the foundation and it's great. This is addictive. I think because I also, sometimes I just like put primer on and then use this all over. So it's amazing. I also have the translucent one. I sometimes use that when I feel like, feel like I have a bit too much product on already and I don't want to add extra powder on top. I don't know how to tell you, like I don't know how to explain like the qualities of this powder and like why I love it. I just do. Let's do half my face and see if like there's anything that like see if you guys will be able to notice. I don't know. I feel like it just sets it, but like it doesn't take away. Like, look, I still like have such a fresh finish fresh finish i feel like it just doesn't take away from like the base that i put down like the base 
is not interrupted, but it is set down. Okay, I'm a bit glossy over here. Let's like turn it down a bit. With the powder without. I feel like I don't have my glasses on, I don't have my contacts on, but like I feel like you can see what I mean. Oh, I almost forgot. Favorite, set favorite setting spray. Oh my God. <sighs> this foundation too. This is one of my favorite foundations. This is when I just want to, like when I'm having a bad skin day. And like I really just want to like feel beautiful. Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder. Best foundation ever. Like this foundation gives me like wedding foundation vibes all the time. So like it's really... It's my pick me up foundation. So I do save it for like a special occasion. Um, but what I didn't save for a special occasion was the airbrush flawless setting spray. And like, oh, anyone wants to just buy it for me? Ooh. Ooh, the spray is getting a bit like, a bit much. This is the best setting spray ever. It just like makes everything look beautiful. It doesn't interrupt the finish, but like blends it all in. It's just like, and lasting, like it makes it last so good. Best setting spray ever. Okay, where am I? Bronzer? Yeah. If I had to pick one thing that was like my, my favorite of the whole year, it might be this. Are you ready? I think you're ready. Well, okay, I'm just gonna tell you. The Ilia. Drawn in night light bronzing powder. It is a very sheer bronzer, but that's what I fucking love about it. Sorry, I've been. I just realized I've been looking at the the viewfinder and not the camera the whole time. Bit out of practice. It kind of does nothing, but in the best way possible. Like I love it. Also, this Retinase multitask brush is the only brush I will ever use for. I don't think it's multitask. This one you can only get in a pack, like the OG pack, but I will never use anything else for bronzer. It's only this. The only bad thing, oh, see what I mean? See what I mean? I didn't even show you. This gets like the, this gets the, what's it called when like you, it gets like wet and like has a, has a cast over the top of it. But anyways, it gets that a lot, but I just like scrape it off. I recently scraped it off. So like now I feel like I'm going to get so much color payoff because I scraped that. Hard pan, that's what it's called. Anyways, my setting spray is still a bit wet, so like that's kind of a bad idea. But this is the best bronzer ever. It's so, it's just delicious. Oh, there was way too much on my brush. And I'm just gonna quickly dust on <gasps> that blush, that Clinique Cheek Pop blush, and I'm gonna use my viewfinder because I don't. Like this is also very sheer, like it doesn't even really show up, which is what I want. I just want it to like set the blush. I look, I look more blushy than usual today, but I'm sure that will settle. I want to give this a special mention, but I don't think you can even get it anymore. I will put it on the screen if you can or you can't, because I got this ages ago. And like Napoleon Purtis is an Australian makeup brand, but it's kind of like, it's been dying for like a few years, but this blush palette called the Blush Engineer Face Shadow Palette is it's scrumptious. How boring does that look? Oh, my thing this year is like boring is better. I mix these two blushes together. Beautiful. I mix these two blushes together. Beautiful. This is probably like my ideal blush shade, like a rusty shimmery situation because another special mention is the Thin Lizzy blush palette. I think they've honestly reformulated this a little bit though but like that I will take this to my grave and they kind of like they kind of like the same thing <laughs> so but I'm not using that today. I'm using my neutral blush. The last product for face. I feel like I have gone on about this for a few years now um, and I'm still on the same bottle. And they did del they deleted the darker colour, which is quite disappointing. But this is the best illuminator in the world. <laughs> That's so dramatic. Um, but it is. Revlon Skin Lights. Mm. 
You can use this like uh, illuminators. You can use a billion different ways. So you can use it under foundation, mix in with foundation. But my favorite way, I don't know what it is, but I really enjoy like highlighting this little gap, like between where I highlight and where I conceal. I'm looking a bit shiny though, so I probably don't need this, but I'm gonna use it anyways to show you how beautiful it is. It's my, f my secret weapon, honestly. It's the most beautiful thing. Wet look. Wet look is all I can say. Um, that's like it for the face. That's it for the face. Um, I haven't finished the eyes clearly, but I'm going to do that off camera because like, I don't know. Lips. Bit of gloss girl. Obviously, I feel like if I'm going to be lazy with makeup, gloss is the way to go. And originally I got sent this for free from um, Raw Cosmetics because like I made like a blog post about their cleansing oil. Really love the brand. Um, and I didn't know that this lip gloss was going to change my life. Anyways, I'm just going to get into it because I really need to, I need to stop with the drama. This is the Raw Cosmetics Superfood super, super Infused Lip Gloss. Coconut Splash Lip Gloss. And the colour is Tan Lines. The formula without shimmer is superior. I recently tried one with a shimmer because I went and like bought, had to repurchase this because I lost it. And like, I've got so many lip glosses, I'm telling you, but not having this one really ruined my life. I needed it back. So this formula, like this is the only lip gloss formula that I put on and my lips don't crack and dry out. It's amazing. And this color is like the perfect color for me. I'm going to properly like line my lips, but like perfect color for me. Let me line my lips and we'll put it on. Just quickly, honorable mention, Rimmel lip liners. I've become a bit of a Rimmel girl in my age. I wouldn't say I'm old. Someone would get mad at me if I said that. And also, in getting older, diffusing your lip line or lipstick with a brush is your best friend, I'm telling you. It like, obviously just like smooths and diffuses your lip line so that it doesn't look shriveled. And when I tell you, obviously it doesn't last very long because it's gloss, but amazing, amazing. That's like the base done. I'm going to do, I might go off and do something funky with my eyes with products that aren't my favorites. I will be using these though, which I guess they're like my favorite jewels, but I haven't used much jewels. So there's not really anything to go off of, but they're still good. These are the embellished by Rowie gems. Might do something with that. Might not. Mascara, I don't really have a favourite. Well, I do have a favourite, but it's discontinued. So, anything from L'Oreal, honestly, is my favourite. Baby Roll is my favourite, like, my old time. I have a few backups of this, but they've discontinued it, so it doesn't matter. I love also the Falsies Lash Lift. And I'm not a fluffy brush person, but I still love this bit creative. I actually wanted to do this look for a while and I got it off Pinterest so like the source is very um not credible but apparently it was posted by Ksenia Lapita so I wonder if she this is her makeup look I don't know. I used the embellished by Rowie Gems but I also didn't use them. Usually I always do like an extra little dot of lash glue just for security and I didn't. So I'm curious to see how they're going to stay because they're also in like a very obviously movable part of my eye. And I decided against doing my hair because I don't, my hair is like not my favorite and half lashes because half lashes only till I die. So this is going to be my look. Hope you had fun. Um, is there any other special mentions while we're here? 
No. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. I want to get George, but like, I want to get George to say goodbye, but he's very much, very much asleep. Um, but his tail is wrapped around his legs. I love it when cats do that and like they wrap their, like I love it when cats do that and they like wrap. A biodome that covered me, a Truman thing that stuck with me and roughed me up.